In this video, we're going to be talking about how do you increase your chances of getting a job in programming or getting a job in tech or, or coding or anything, right? Uh, this, what I'm going to say, largely applies to, to coding, but some of the some of the things I'm going to talk about actually can, can be applied to other things as well. But yeah, these are my thoughts on how to actually get a job in tech. So here we go. One, get certified. Getting certified was and is still the best way to actually increase your chances of getting getting a job in, in programming. So getting certified either, number one, by going to university and doing uh, com, uh, computer science or IT or information systems or anything like that, that is still the best way to do it, right? Because if you're doing that and you have that degree or that degree or diploma, companies will actually be searching for you. So that's number one. It's the, it's the tried and trusted way of, of doing it. Uh, number two, close to that is still getting certified, but doing it on a uh, short course basis, like either doing like a three month course or three to six months uh, boot camp or even a one year a one year boot camp, which is shorter than going to university. But yeah, you still going to go to class, and like um, and just invest some, uh, invest a lot of time into just uh, getting certified uh, in, in anything that in anything that has to do with tech. So that's that's pretty much um, second to going to university, and then. Um, so those those two, okay. So the first two that I'm talking about will require lots of time. Now uh, universities uh, universities will take up three to four years, maybe even five, depending on how on how hard it is for you. Uh, boot camps six six months to to a year, but then those are not the only way of actually uh, getting a job, or those are not the only things you could do to increase your chances of getting a job. Another thing that you could do to get a job is you can skip the certification and go straight to a portfolio. Now, this is important. If you do not have the credentials, then you need something to offset that you don't have the credentials. And the quickest way to offset uh, the creds or the certificates is a portfolio. Basically, build stuff, right? Go learn how to code and build a couple of applications or utilities or anything, and then just show them to your potential employer. That really works. That really works. Because it actually proves that you know what you're talking about. It actually proves that you actually have used the the frameworks or the programming languages or anything that you that um that the employer is going to be interested in. So yeah, build a portfolio. And building a portfolio, uh, the the building a portfolio can be done in multiple ways. The quickest way of building a portfolio is doing it the free routes. Free routes is um. Free route is you pretty much just pick a project and you work on it. It could be a project that you that you find online where you, there's someone with doing a tutorial and they're building a specific project and you rebuild the same thing, or you go do an online course where there's a project or multiple projects and then you pretty much just uh, do the same thing. And there's lots of things that are like that. Uh, let me just let's go to the computer and just let me, so I can show you this. So if you go to for instance, let's say Udemy. If you go to udemy.com, there are a lot of courses where, where you will learn how to do something specific or how to use a specific programming language, whilst at the same time, you'll be building your portfolio. Right. So if I look into JavaScript, there is a whole host of, uh, of courses that are here. The one that I like or the types that I like are the ones where you build multiple, multiple uh, projects within, within, the, within the course itself. So as an example, let me see. Uh, there we go. See this one it says here 50 projects in 50 days. What this means for you is you're going to learn JavaScript and you're actually going to have a portfolio of 50 applications or 50 applets or anything that you can actually show um, that you can use as a, as a portfolio always part of your portfolio and there's lots of things like this you can just go let me see what else is here i'm not even reading the descriptions i just want to see how many applications get built within the specific project okay let's go second page there's another one With this one, there's 20 projects. So with this, you learn JavaScript, or you actually learn vanilla JavaScript, and you get to build 20 projects. So this is a quick way of getting up to date or getting up to scratch with the portfolio if you don't have any ideas. 
Another way of actually building up your portfolio is finding a way to get paid for you to build your portfolio. Uh, this means you can also just offer your services as, a, as an IT specialist or as a programming, um, programming consultant or anything as a web developer or as a web developer to just say, okay, I can build websites using this language or this specific, um, this specific thing. And then you can just sign up, uh, like for instance, you can just sign up with something like uh, Upwork.com. Yeah, sign up with something like Upwork.com or what's the other one? Fiverr, Fiverr.com. So on Fiverr.com, it's pretty easy to get started, but getting noticed is gonna be tricky. But here yeah, you can just sign up to what any of these websites. So you can do Fiverr, you can do, what's the other one? Upwork.com, you can do, I think it's called Freelancer. Freelancer.com, where you pretty much just freelance for people and then just help them with, with specific things. And then you can use the portfolio that you gained from your courses as uh, you can just showcase that to get your new clients and then your new clients will pay you to build their applications or websites and then you can be paid to actually build a portfolio so that's that's one of the, the well, that's one of the ways in which you can build a portfolio another way is to be pretty much just find an organization and just offer your services and just offer your services like you can speak to ngos you can speak to your communities your churches or anything like that and just offer your services so that you can actually build something for them and whilst at the same time uh, advertising your services but that's you are probably not going to get paid or you're going to get, get paid small amounts of money but anyways you are you're going to be building your portfolio all right and another thing important thing to note about a portfolio is your your is that you always you're always building it for the next projects or for the next job or for the next gig. So even though you might not be paid for your first few projects or you might be paid little for your first uh, few projects, the more you, the more of them you do, the more you can charge later on um, or the more opportunities you're going to get later on to do uh, bigger things. So yeah, that's the second way of increasing your, the second way of increasing your chances of getting a job is that you just build a portfolio, just focus on building a portfolio. Uh, number three, uh, one of the things you can do of to increase your chances of getting a job is start using coding websites. When I say coding websites, I'm talking lead code, I'm talking hacker rank. Um, the one I like is Edabit. So any of those websites where you could go in and do coding challenges and get ranked, just do those um, and get some type of ranking. Even if it's not a big ranking or, or you don't need to be way up there, as long as you have something so that you can actually just show a potential employer and say, hey, uh, I I have this and this as in my portfolio. Plus, I have this many points on this coding website. So that actually helps to show uh, to show that you are actually that you're actually passionate about coding or that you're actually serious about getting better at coding. So that's really important. Yeah, if you have a ranking of any sorts, if you have any an amount of points in any coding websites, just put up those points everywhere. Have them on your LinkedIn, Facebook, CV, everywhere. Just say, hey, I have these many points in such and such websites. So that's number three, getting code, getting uh, ranked on coding websites. Uh, number four is contribute to open source. Contributing to open source has one major benefit. And that major benefit is everything you contribute to an open source library or to an open source uh, repo is public. And the, ni and the nice thing with that is it doesn't matter what you contribute. You can contribute code, you can contribute documentation, you can contribute diagrams, you can even contribute the logo of a package. Like if you find a package that has a nice sounding name and you can just write it up in a fancy way, you can just design a logo for it and then have that as a contribution. You can, you can also contribute tests uh, for a package. So you don't actually need to contribute the hardcore core um, program or functions or classes that are required for an open source repo. There's lots of things to, to contribute. And it doesn't matter how much you contribute. As long as you've sent something and it's been merged onto the repo, it means you've made a contribution. Even if it was just a typo, you found a typo and you fixed it, that's a contribution to open source. So you can put throw that into your CV. You can actually talk about it and say, hey, during an interview, I've contributed to this and such and such package, but it wasn't a major contribution as it was just documentation or anything like that. The fact that you made a contribution is huge. So that will increase your chances of actually uh, finding a job in, in, in tech. Uh, one of the main reasons for that is version control is a big thing in technology. 
uh, version control is a big thing in technology or coding. So if you know how to work with version control uh, in, 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 um, when working with the open source projects, it means that when they hire you, you are going to be comfortable working with, with their version control with, with whatever project that the company is going to be working with. So yeah, it's big. It's a big thing and it works. It will increase your chances of actually getting a coding job. Number five, we are actually going to go now go back to getting certified again, right? But the certifications that I want you to look into now are different. I want you to look into, look into, the, look into the vendor certifications. For instance, cloud providers. We're talking AWS, Azure, GCP. They all offer certificates of some sort. So you can just go learn and get the certifications from those cloud providers and that will increase your chances of actually getting a job in tech. You don't have to get the the, fag, the fancy big ones, even just the fundamentals, the Azure fundamentals or AWS, um, what is it called? Certified Cloud Practitioner. That's enough to, to put your head above the rest when it comes to um, being, being um, when, it, when it comes to getting a job in programming that it will definitely, definitely increase your chances of, of getting a job in tech. So any vendor certification, um, cloud cloud uh, server management, um, even Docker has certifications. There, there, there's a lot. Just research whatever vendor certificates that you can find and start with the easy ones. Start with the easy ones that, are, um, that you feel are relevant to what you're looking for. And just go get those certifications and then work from there. Um, and make oh yeah another important thing about certificates the more certificates you get okay not me let me not say with more the more with each certificate you get make sure you update your LinkedIn you update your CV you update your Facebook you update everything even if make a video on TikTok if you have to tell everyone that you you are now certified that's very important as everyone needs to know when you that you're certified whenever you get a certificate right so number six. We're going to go back to socials, right? It is important to let everyone know that you are looking for a gig or looking for gigs in tech. So it's something that you do need to talk about consistently and you have to be public, like public, public. You, are, we are, we, you have to be on Facebook. Um, okay, you don't necessarily have to be on Facebook, but you have to be somewhere in on the internet where you express your desire to work in tech or where you express your desire for tech or software or coding or anything like that. Why do you think I have a YouTube channel? Like if you look at this YouTube channel, look at the, the old videos. Some of those old videos are actually tutorials, right? So those videos I actually did whilst I was still a student at a bootcamp. And they are one of the things that... that um, that, that the employer or potential employer at the time looked it looked into before I got a gig and I was able to actually just lot in pretty nicely and pretty quickly uh, because I had already shown that I actually could I actually had it in me to teach programming and I used those videos as, as an example and that put me above the rest above the rest and yeah the rest was history now I have now I have actually have a job in tech and I those videos that I put up about what was it three years ago three four years ago they they help me to get a, to get a job in tech, so yeah, it does help to actually push yourself out there, and it, it you can do it in different ways. You could be it could be giving advice, you could be doing tutorials, it could be uh, doing research, it could be reviewing uh, content. You can actually review other people's content, like you can review tutorials, other people's tutorials, other people's courses, or anything like that um, online. So that way, people will know that you actually are knowledgeable in things that have to do with coding or tech in whatever specific language or framework that you are interested in. in. So yeah, share your knowledge, show, share your knowledge in, in, in the internet. Let me just put it like that. That's number six. Number seven, very important, very, very, very important is you keep applying for jobs. That's it. You said you want to get a job. You want to increase your chances of getting a job. Well, then apply for jobs. Right? It's a, it, it is sometimes a daunting task, but it is a task that needs to be needs to be done. Just keep just keep um putting putting your cv out there and you, you can go to a variety of websites you can go to job websites you can go to recruit recruitment websites like in africa in south, uh, in south africa right um there's there's offers in right for tech you can go to a company like offers in create your profile and they'll actually find uh, they'll try to match you with a company that might be um that might be interested in you so you can go to um what is it you can go to something like um careers 24 where is it? I had it here somewhere. 
yeah, you can go to Careers24, create a profile, and let the recruiters find you. Then you can go to Indeed.com or Indeed. No, it's Indeed.com. You can go to Pnet. There are a lot of job sites that are out there. Just create a profile and let the people find you and let the recruiters find you. You can go to LinkedIn. Make sure you switch that little talk that says, I am looking for a job or I'm I'm interested in, in finding a job. I okay, forgot what it says exactly, but it's something like that. And do that. And that's, that's pretty much the... One of the important ones is just to let the pe just let people know that you are looking for a job. So yeah, that's what I, I had in my mind today. But yeah, again, here's the list. If you want to increase your chances in getting a job in programming, one, get certified. Either a university or a technicon or bootcamp or whatever, that's one option. Uh, option two, option two, build a portfolio. Okay, you're always going to be building a portfolio. You can do it for free. You can charge people, but just continuously work on... Um, on a, on, a, on, a, on a couple of projects. Number three, get ranked on coding websites. Number four, contribute to open source and it doesn't matter how you contribute. As long as you contribute, that's it. They'll, they'll put you above um, many people. Number five, um, number five, just get vendor certified. Get vendor certified. You can do cloud. You can do containers with Docker. You can do a whole lot of things. As long as it's some certification, some vendor certification, they'll uh, Get you, uh, put you in good odds of getting a job in tech. Number, uh, what is it? Where am I? Is it six? Share knowledge. Just talk about coding <laughs> online. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just talk about it in some way, in some shape or form. Number seven, just and again, just keep applying for jobs. Apply, keep applying. That's that's pretty much the main requirement uh, for increasing your chances of getting a job in in tech or a job in programming. And yeah, that was it for today. Okay, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.